Hello and welcome to St. Peter's Church, Elworth, as we gather together to praise and worship God. If you are new or are regular to these services, we welcome you no matter who you are or where you're from, and pray that you feel God's love with you today. Let us pray. Jesus, lead us to the Father by your Spirit. Help us draw near as we come with awe and gladness. Help us draw near. Amen. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings and by following in his way, come to share in his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Hebrews chapter 11 verse 32 to chapter 12 verse 4. Should I go on? There isn't enough time for me to speak of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel and the prophets. Through faith they fought whole countries and won. They did what was right and received what God had promised. They shut the mouths of lions, put out fierce fires, escaped being killed by the sword. They were weak but became strong. They were mighty in battle and defeated the armies of foreigners. Through faith, women received their dead relatives back to life. Others, refusing to accept freedom, died under torture in order to be raised to a better life. Some were mocked and whipped, and others were put in chains and taken off to prison. They were stoned, 
They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went round clothed in sheep of skin or goats, poor, persecuted and ill-treated. The world was not good enough for them. They wandered like refugees in the deserts and hills, living in caves and holes in the ground. What a record all these have won by their faith. Yet they did not receive what God had promised, because God had decided on an even better plan for us. His purpose was only in company with us, would be made perfect. As for us, we have this large crowd of witnesses round us. So then, let us rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way, and of the sin which holds on to us so tightly, and let us run with determination the race which lies before us. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from beginning to end. He did not give up because of the cross. On the contrary, because of the joy that was waiting for him, he thought nothing of the disgrace of dying on the cross, and he is now seated at the right-hand side of God's throne. Think of what he went through, how much he put up with so, hate, so much hatred from the sinners. So do not let yourselves become discouraged and give up, for in your struggle against sin, you have not yet had to resist to the point of being killed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Over the last few weeks, we've been looking at characters in the Bible who have lived by faith in God and demonstrated enduring hope during times of difficulties, so as to encourage us today during our days of challenge. Joseph, who showed us we can trust God even when we are rejected by others. Gideon, who showed us we can trust God even when we don't trust ourselves. Job, who showed us we can trust God even when everything seems to be going wrong. Peter, who showed us we could trust God even when we are feeling terrified. And Paul, who showed us we can trust God when all seems hopeless and our plans don't seem to be working. In today's reading from the New Testament book of Hebrews, we can see that a trust in Jesus can be costly, but the reward is beyond our wildest dreams. But it might not come when we expect it in our mortal lifetime. Placing our trust in something or someone can often be costly, though often it is the right thing to do and leads to the expecting outcome. When we want to go somewhere on a train, we have to buy a train ticket and that can be costly. But with that train ticket, we get to the right place. But sometimes we can place our trust in the wrong place and the cost to us can be high and not achieve what we want. We can lose money. Relationships can be damaged, and in the worst case, we can lose our health or even our lives and end up in the wrong place. In these challenging days of a global pandemic, where we are all looking for peace and answers, we are all placing our trust somewhere. But what are the consequences? Placing our trust in Jesus for our lives today and for the future has consequences both rewards and costs. Hebrews chapters 11 and 12 spells this out for us in a realistic way. The writer in those chapters looks back to the Old Testament, first to show the heroes of God who had great victories and would have been seen as successful in verse 32. Gideon, Samson, David. But the writer warns his readers and us that there were other Old Testament heroes who were not seen as successful by the world, who remained true to God. Role models who were condemned for their faith by the world, but still endured with hope, trusting in God's promises, even when abused by the world. And we read of that in verses 36 to 38 of chapter 11. And though these people were condemned for, for their faith by the world, Verse 39 declares that they are commended by God and will share with us God's promises on the last day. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what they had been promised. God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. If we trust in Jesus and live faithfully to his commands, what should we expect? For some, it might mean wealth, status and popularity in the world. But for many of us, 
it will mean condemnation by the world. Yes, even for some of us in the 21st century, it may mean imprisonment, beatings and death. But most of us, for, of us living in 2020s Britain, that will not be the case. The condemnation we will face comes in the forms of words and exclusion. The attitude of the media which labels us as bigoted and no fun, which excludes us from invites to social activities and to freedom of expression, and increasingly to exclusion from jobs and positions of responsibilities in the life of the nation. Being a Christian following Jesus is costly, not just through faithful service in sacrificial giving of our time and tithes, but also in the form of abuse from a condemning world. But the author reminds us in Hebrews, not just of the cost today, but the reward of living for Jesus now and in the future, the commendation of God. So what have we been promised? Well, chapters 12 verses one and two tells us that firstly, we are not alone. There is a great cloud of witnesses for us to follow and who are cheering us on. How? By us casting off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. It may seem easier for us to conform to the values of the world, materialism, seeking success, status, wealth, and making all about me, but that doesn't help us to run the race of life. It's like running a marathon with a ton weight on our backs. However, if we run the race Jesus's way, persevering in self-giving love rather than self-satisfying lusts, pursuing truth and hope, even though this makes us a target for scorn and persecution, we will complete the race and share in his victory and his reward. The race of life is tough and costly, but we are called to run it in a broken world. We're not called to opt out, but to run amongst those who don't share our point of view, remembering why we run and what keeps us going. The cloud of witnesses and Jesus. For verse two, encourages us to keep Jesus at the centre of all that we do. Why? Because he is the source, sustainer and perfecter of our faith. He is our joy maker, who endured pain and shame, but stayed faithful, who paid a cost we cannot pay, but shares with us the prize beyond all prizes. Eternal life, today and forever. You see, God's gift to us through faith in Jesus is not an easy mortality, but eternal life. And as we're reminded in 1 Peter chapter 3, we are to maintain our Christian witness in the world with gentleness, engagement and respect, avoiding wrongdoing and false compromises, so that our behaviour may speak of Jesus in the faith of derision. Indeed, in 1 Peter 4, 19, it urges us to go further. So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. The cost may be hard to bear, but the results have been remarkable in the history of the church and in the persecuted church around the world today. If you get a chance to have a look at the Open Doors website for some stories of encouragement, please do. If your trust in Jesus is coming with a cost, don't lose heart because you are not alone. You are commended by God. And because you are not alone, we have a trust and a hope which is certain. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that all those who believe in him, all those who are keeping him at the centre of their lives, will not perish, but will have eternal life. Trust costs. Keep enduring in hope. For Jesus is the Lord and Saviour, the author and perfecter of our faith and our life today and forevermore. We pray, Lord, 
may your light of hope shine in the darkness as we begin to see the end of this pandemic. This year has brought so many unforeseen challenges to all of us, Father, spiritually, emotionally and physically. But your love does not waver, Lord, and in you we can take refuge. The Bible reminds us that your love endures forever. Dear Lord, thank you for today, thank you for yesterday, and thank you for tomorrow. We thank you for our families, for our friends, for our homes, and we thank you for our joys and our sorrows, for all that makes us stronger when we live our lives through you, Lord. And we ask this in your name. Amen. We pray for all those who are unwell, in hospitals, in care homes, and in their own homes. Give them your strength, Lord, and your love. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have lost a loved one, and we thank you for their lives. Although they no longer walk beside us, or hold our hands. They live in our hearts and in our memories and in our prayers. Comfort those left behind, Father. Keep them and carry them in their sadness and in their loss, and give them, Lord, peace in their hearts. Amen. During this time of Lent, God, we pray for the courage and boldness to follow wherever you lead us, to love and serve however we can. May we not disappoint you in our daily lives and help us to reflect on your love, Lord, made visible in the life and death of Jesus. Heavenly Father, help us to live lives full of faith and teach us to find hope in the face of adversity. Let us look at Lent not as a time of just giving up chocolate or wine, but as a time of spiritual renewal and a time to walk more closely with Jesus. Show us what we need to turn away from and what we need to turn towards, Lord. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Finally, Father, we pray for our church, St. Peter's. May we soon be able to meet each other, embrace each other, and sing your praises to you in your church. Lord, we pray for the day when we can open our doors to the children of our community so they may come to know you and your love for them. We also pray for all those in school as children go back, and we ask them to protect them and look over them. And we ask all this, Lord, in your name. Amen. And as our Lord taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the examples in Hebrews of worthy men and women who gained your approval through their faith. Even though it cost them dearly, they continued to trust in the truth of your word when faced with unspeakable difficulties and dangers, and their faith did not waver. I pray that we may have the sort of faith that does not waver when problems arise that we have, and that we will be faithful always, knowing that your promises never fail and your word cannot be denied. I pray that we may be faithful witnesses to you in our lives. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, we fix our eyes on you and build our lives upon you. May faith grow stronger daily until we see your face in that final day. Amen. May the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.